this is my journey from the full-time chaos, firefighting, all the office politics and drama and rubbish that comes with it, the pointless meetings, etc., uh, all the way through to the full-time freedom, the time freedom, location freedom, um, and you know, somewhat financial freedom as well. So let's have a look um, at this, and I'll try and do this as briefly as I can do, but. Essentially, that was me in the um, meetings, you know, all day and having reached what I perceive to be the pinnacle of my software development career, you know, going all the way from junior dev all the way up to tech director. Um, I felt like I hadn't really, uh, I wasn't really that happy because I was sat in meetings all day. I wasn't doing much in the way of development and equally, I wasn't really progressing. It was just more fire each day, more chaos and more things you know, going wrong. Um, and I'd lost that sort of love of uh, development and uh, the idea of like building something that people really like. It was just so far removed when you, this guy over here. So um, I started to question, right, like I'm here, I'm at the top, but I'm unhappy, you know, how can that be? And what can I do about this? And I started looking at reading some books and I ended up reading some self-help sort of self-development books and one of those books in particular resonated with me and that was the Rich Dad Poor Dad book and that is a book that a lot of people aren't familiar with but once you've read it it can be a bit of a life change give you a bit of a life changing perspective shift um, and essentially what I learned from that book was that instead of getting paid per hour and just trying to get paid more and get pay increases, you know, as you go up the career path and up the, the corporate ladder, uh, that you can actually, you know, build a sustainable income and in fact, a disproportionately large income by building digital assets and products. So if you can productize your skill set and your software development skill set certainly can be productized, then you can potentially build something that you can build once and sell to many people. And that thing is really at the core of Microsoft and the disproportionate leveraged passive income that you can generate as a solo developer. So I read that book, I had a, a bit of a, a life-changing moment, I started working on things in the evenings and carried on working on things in the weekends. And then it progressed, you know, from there until the point where I was able to ship my first Microsoft app. Now in my case, these are Chrome extensions that I'm working on. It could easily be a WordPress plugin, Shopify plugin. It could be its own web app. Um, it doesn't really matter the form of the Microsoft. It's really about the recurring subscription income that's at the core of the uh, Microsoft model. So this over here was my very first Chrome extension. It took me one weekend to build. It was uh, but ugly. And, um, but it was functional and it, the critically, it was built for an audience that were crying out for something along those lines. And I went on to build this one, which was for the same audience, um, merged by Amazon creators. That one was free. That one was a one-off fee of $12.99, $12.99. And this one was super simple. Let's say it took me a couple of hours over a weekend, but it actually generated uh, over $3,000 in income, which was surprising. Um, but, uh, and people within this community were loving it. I discovered this um, Merch by Amazon community sort of by mistake whilst I was looking for side hustles in addition to software. And I realized, oh, hold on, I can leverage my software skills instead of trying to build, you know, Merch by Amazon uh, digital assets, which are t-shirts and t-shirt designs. When they're sold, you get paid a digital royalty. Uh, instead of doing that, I could actually generate software that help people to create these um, digital designs and upload them and manage the designs, the library of them, you know, in a much more efficient way. And as a result of these, as the foundations that I had built upon and I attracted a, a reasonable size audience and I got the emails of people that had signed up for these ones, I was then able to go ahead and launch my big app, which is a flagship app, which is Merch Wizard. And Merch Wizard was the big game changer for me. And uh, that took uh, years of development in the end. And it was the thing that allowed me to quit my day job 
So we'll get into some details as to how I managed to scale that up, but that was uh, the big one for me. Okay, so I was working on Merch Wizard and I have to ask myself, what is it I'm hoping to achieve here? You know, uh, is it just some money on the side? I'm happy with the day job because, you know, that's fine. It could just be beer money here. Um, it could be rent money. So money that just pays the mortgage or pays the rent. But for me, after I tasted my croissants and the freedom that it gave, uh, like freedom it gives, I'd actually thought it's got to be for me this quit the day job money. You know, no, I've not got to this FU money stage yet. Um, and that will be some time away, but this quit the day job thing just stuck with me. And I was like, right, this is my motivation. If I can get out of all the rubbish, you know, that's going on at work and not have to commute anymore, not have the office politics and all the drama, the rubbish, the stupid decisions, the tech decisions that are wrong and all that, um, then I would be uh, willing to do anything in the evenings and weekends to build something that would allow me to quit that. So I did, I uh, set about scaling up Merch Wizard uh, to a point where I could uh, quit the day job. So I put this graphic in there because I think it summarized things pretty well. Um, so there was my nine to five corporate job. I've been in that for 20 years and then I had 10 years then at the last place. And then I was just, Microsoft had caught my eye and that was it, I was hooked. Wanted to know what I could do to uh, to really sort of build this up. So uh, even whilst I was at the day job, I was building things uh, and working on things as I say, uh, evenings, weekends, and even at lunch times as well. And one thing I'd noticed in the community that I was serving, this Merch by Amazon community, was that there wasn't any sort of UK or European based conference. And for whatever reason, I decided as well as having a full-time job and this side hustle, it would be a good idea to, to kind of create a conference for these people as well. Um, so I don't a bit of a reputation as a trusted developer in the community, but then taking that a step further, I was able to put together the Merch UK conference. I was able to, able to meet a load of Merch Wizard users and again, build up my trust and the profile and reputation that I had within that community. So it was stressful putting on an event like this, the first time I've ever done anything like that and speaking in front of people as well, not generally something that I'm that comfortable with, but got on with it and it was a great event got all these people together and we had a great time and critically for me i was able to get a load of contacts um, and merch wizard users that were able to get give me honest feedback on potential new features and also on uh, any sort of issues you were finding um, and just give me the, their honest opinion basically so i really enjoyed putting that conference together and that was it really i was then focused on really sort of scaling up Merch Wizard and making it so I could quit my day job with um, through Microsoft. So uh, I was keen to get out of there and get out of the, the grind. And I think it was really, um, I would been steadily building up the a runway of savings and we've been cutting back costs and things like that. But there was in particular one Black Friday sale where we did particularly well with the Merch Wizard sales. And uh, that gave me the comf comfort and confidence to be able to kind of walk in and say to the bosses that's it i quit you know and uh, i didn't quite throw the paper in the air quite like this um, but i did go in there with confidence because unlike quitting for another job you know with maybe a bit more money or quitting to go freelancing and hoping that i can pull you know together enough clients and projects to last i knew that i built up a sustainable recurring income and that even if I didn't work on it, you know, for a month, I'd still get paid the, you know, roughly the same amount each month. Um, so it was with great confidence and, that, and great delight that I eventually said, corporate rat race, I'm out of here, I'll see you later. So I quit my job and I was now full time on trying to grow and scale up the uh, Merch Wizard app. So you can see me here watering the app and making sure it's got the nourishment that it needs to to grow nicely obviously i don't have a beard or hair quite like that but uh but there you go so when this app was uh like developing really nicely it gave me an opportunity to build a second app um, for some of the people in that community that were also in a very similar community um, based on selling kindle books on amazon 
so that's the KDP community. And uh, they were basically crying out for this new app. So I went ahead and built KDP Wizard. And this one, I was able to build this just because of the income that was coming in from Merch Wizard sustainably. Uh, I was able to then focus on creating something completely fresh um, in KDP Wizard uh, just because of that recurring income that was coming in from Merch Wizard. I ended up uh, spending a few months developing it. And then when I did the launch for it, I was able to monetize uh, that really well and build up the, the hype a lot better than I had with Merch Wizard. I was able to get a completely organic launch um, that brought in uh, multiple five figures, which um, was a huge launch, you know, for purely organic without any paid advertising. So I was very proud of that. And then, yeah, so then I, then I had two assets that I was trying to build up, Merch Wizard and KDP Wizard. And eventually uh, you'd have thought, well, that's great. You know, that's all good. And uh, yeah, you should be happy with the lifestyle that you've got. And I was. But my head was being turned by uh, some shiny objects. So we call it shiny object syndrome, where you're not really focusing anymore on your core um, apps and things that you're working on, the core business, uh, because you're spotting other opportunities and it's just easy to get distracted by them. So again, this graphic sort of sums it up well, where once Merch Wizard KDP Wizard was the, the shiny object in the distance, um, now it was becoming that I'd been in these niches, you know, for a couple of years and it wasn't quite as exciting as it were when I first started. So I was thinking, oh, I could do the same thing for Etsy. We could have an Etsy wizard or eBay or the another uh, arm of selling on Amazon, which is FBA. It could be an FBA wizard or something completely outside the wizard sort of um, branding. And uh, I found myself being distracted by the opportunities. And I realized, you know, perhaps if my heart's not in these anymore, then maybe it's a good time to have a look at selling those and exiting, you know, from exiting these SaaS apps and see if I can get paid a cash lump sum. And then I could focus on one of these, you know, in the future. So that's what I did. I uh, ended up listing the, um, the apps up on Empire Flippers and uh, that process went really smoothly and I was really proud that I was able to achieve the second highest uh, SaaS valuation multiplier on uh, Empire Flippers at the time, which was uh, 57 times uh, monthly net revenue. And when I did get this live on the marketplace, uh, I actually sold the apps within five hours of it going live for a life changing amount of money. Um, it was a bit of a roller coaster, and there's um, you know, produced a video on on all that stuff as well as a review on Empire Flippers. But that was a really good experience and taught me, you know, a lot about what it is that buyers are looking for when they're looking to acquire Microsoft apps. So yeah, um, that was it. Then I'd come out and um, got this this money, but no longer the uh, subscription income from the apps. So yeah, that's. Uh, my sort of story and journey in a nutshell. So again, on this channel, these are the main things that we cover, the main one being microSAS, um, but all of it will be covered from passive income to how to quit your day job, to how to build and develop Chrome extensions in particular um, that are profitable for you. So if that sounds of interest to you, then please uh, subscribe and hopefully I'll see you around. All right, cheers for now.